ventilations are artificial breaths given to patients who are not breathing or who are not breathing adequately. These breaths are given by blowing exhaled air through the patient's mouth and into the lungs, inflating them. When delivering ventilations, providers must pay attention to both the volume and the pressure of the breaths they give, especially in children. Excessive volume or pressure can cause air to become forced into and trapped in the stomach. This decreases the effectiveness of the ventilations and increases the chance a patient will vomit. Correct volume and pressure can be judged on a patient of any size by watching the chest rise. A slow, even rise of the chest provides adequate ventilation with minimum volume, pressure, and complication. Providers who are closely related to a patient, such as a family member, may choose to provide ventilations using direct mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact. In some cases, such as in an occupational setting or with someone you don't know, it is appropriate to reduce the possibility of your exposure to infectious disease. Use a protective barrier device, such as a face shield or ventilation mask, when giving ventilations. When using a face shield, place the opening on the shield over the patient's mouth and establish an open airway. Seal the patient's nose by pinching the nostrils closed. Take a deep breath. Press down on the shield with your mouth to create an airtight seal and blow through the opening. The delivery time of each ventilation should be about two seconds for an adult. Ventilation should be slow, smooth, and even. Take a fresh breath in preparation for the next ventilation. Remove your mouth from the shield after each ventilation. Each one must visibly raise the chest. Allow the patient to completely exhale. Be careful not to overventilate. Follow the same steps when using a face shield on a child. Take a slower time, approximately one to one and one half seconds for a child, to provide each breath. When using a face shield on an infant, place the opening of the shield over both the mouth and nose. Establish an open airway. Take a deep breath. Place your mouth over the infant's mouth and nose. Press down on the shield to create an airtight seal and blow through the opening. Do not overventilate. Remember, ventilation should be slow, smooth, and even. Each one should visibly raise the chest. Not all face shields are intended for use on children and infants. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for use on these patients. Direct mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilations are performed using the same techniques, except without the face shield. The decision to not use a barrier device is ultimately made by the provider and is usually dependent on a close relationship to the patient. The universal use of protective barriers is recommended to reduce a provider's risk of exposure to infectious disease. Using a mask requires a slightly different approach. For both adults and children, place the top of the mask over the bridge of the nose. The rest of the mask should lie naturally on the patient's face, covering his nose and mouth. Using your hand on the patient's forehead, form your thumb and forefinger into a V shape to control the top of the mask. Use the thumb of the hand lifting the chin to control the bottom of the mask. While opening the airway, seal the mask against the patient's face by bringing the jaw up into it. Take a deep breath. Put your mouth around the one-way valve and blow until the chest rises. Remove your mouth. Allow the patient to completely exhale. Techniques for using a mask on an infant vary. Typically, the face mask is turned upside down with the tapered end toward the chin. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for use on an infant. Remember, blowing too hard or too much air can cause air to become trapped in the stomach and increase the risk of vomiting, especially in children. This can create significant airway difficulties in an unresponsive patient. Limiting ventilation volume and pressure can help to avoid this problem.
The use of supplemental oxygen is beneficial and desired when providing rescue breathing. The greater the percentage of oxygen delivered, the higher the benefit. Delivery devices vary in the percentage of oxygen they can provide. By simply attaching an oxygen supply tube at a flow rate of 15 liters per minute to an inlet on a ventilation mask allows the delivery of approximately 40 to 60 percent oxygen in a rescue breath. Other devices such as the bag valve mask and the flow restricted oxygen powered ventilator deliver greater percentages of oxygen than a ventilation mask but also require more training and practice. The recommended priorities for using an oxygen delivery device by a Dan BLS Pro provider are ventilation mask with supplemental oxygen, bag valve mask with two rescuers, and bag valve mask with one rescuer.